Where is the fellow? Half afeard to come. Go to, go to. Come hither, sir. Good Majesty, Herod of Jury dare not look upon you, but when you are well pleased. That Herod's head I'll have. But how, when Antony is gone through whom I might command it? Come thou near. Most gracious majesty. Didst thou behold Octavia? I, dread queen. Where? Madam, in Rome, I looked her in the face and saw her led between her brother and... Mark Antony. Is she as tall as me? Madam, she's not. Did she hear her speak? Is she shrill-tongued or low? Madam, I heard her speak. She is low-voiced. That's not so good. He cannot like her long. Like her? I said it is impossible. I think so, Charmian. Dull of tongue and dwarfish. <laughs> what majesty is in her gate, remember, if e'er thou lookst on majesty. She... creeps. <laughs> her motion and her station are as one. She shows a body rather than a life. A statue than a breather. Is this certain? Oh, I have no observance. Three in Egypt cannot make better note. It's very knowing, I do perceive. There's nothing in her yet. The fellow has good judgment. Excellent. Guess at her years, I prithee. Madam, she was a, a widow. Widow! <laughs> Charming, <laughs> Mark! And I do think she's 30. <laughs> There's thou her face in mind. It's long or round. Round, even to faultiness. For the most part, too, they are foolish that are so. Hair. What colour? Brown, madam. And her forehead as low as she would wish it. There's gold for thee. Thou must not take my former sharpness ill. I will employ thee back again. I find thee most fit for business. Go make thee ready. Our letters are prepared. A proper man. Indeed he is so. I repent me much that so I harried him. Why, methinks by him this creature is no such thing. Nothing, man. The man hath seen some majesty and should know. Hath he seen majesty? Isis else defend and serving you so long. All may be well enough. I warrant you, madam. <laughs> Not only that, that were excusable, but he hath waged new wars. Spoke scantily of me when the best hint was given him. He not took or did it from his teeth. Oh, my good lord, believe not all. Or if you must believe, stomach not all. A more unhappy lady, if this division chance ne'er stood between, praying for both parts. Good gods will mock me presently when I shall pray. Bless my lord and husband. Undo that prayer by crying out as loud, Oh, bless my brother. Husband, win. Win, brother. Praise and destroys that prayer. No midway twixt these extremes at all. Gentle Octavia, if I lose mine honor, I lose myself. Better I were not yours than yours so branchless. And as you requested, yourself shall go between us. Meantime, lady, I'll raise the preparation of a war shall stain your brother. Make your soonest haste. Thanks to my lord. The Jove of power make me. 
Most weak. Most weak, your reconciler. Wars twixt you twain would be as if the world should cleave. Provide your going. Contemning Rome, he has done all this and more in Alexandria. Here's the manner of it. In the marketplace, on a tribunal silvered, Cleopatra and himself in chairs of gold were publicly enthroned. At her side stood Caesarion, whom they call my father's son, and all the unlawful issue that their lust since then had made between them. This in the public eye! in a common showplace where they exercise. His sons, he there proclaimed, the kings of kings. Great Medea, Parthia, and Armenia he gave to Alexander. To Ptolemy, he assigned Syria, Cilicia, and Phoenicia. She, in the habiliments of the goddess Isis, that day appeared. Let Rome be thus informed. Coquizy with his insolence already will their good thoughts call from him. The people know it and have now received his accusations. Who does he accuse? Caesar. He frets that Lepidus of the Triumvirate should be deposed, and being that we detain all his revenue. Sir, this should be answered. I've told him Lepidus was grown too cruel and to deserve his change. <laughs> Hail Caesar and my lord. Hail, most dear Caesar. That ever I should call thee castaway. You have not called me so, nor have you cause. Why have you stolen upon us thus? You come not like Caesar's sister. The wife of Antony should have an army for an usher, and the nays of horse to tell of her approach long ere she did appear. But you are come a market maid to Rome, and have prevented the ostentation of our love. Good my lord, to come thus was I not constrained, but did it on my free will. My lord Mark Antony, hearing that you prepared for war, acquainted my grieved ear with all, whereon I begged his pardon for return. Which soon he granted, being an abstract between his lust and him. Do not say so, my lord. I have eyes upon him, and his affairs come to me on the wind. Where is he now? My lord, in Athens. No. My most wronged sister, Cleopatra, hath nodded him to her. He hath given his empire up to a whore, who now are levying the kings of the earth for war. Oh. He hath assembled Bacchus, the king of Libya, Archelaus of Cappadocia, Philadelphos, king of Paphlagonia, the Thracian king of Dallas, king Morchus of Arabia, king of Pont, Herod of Jury, Mithridates, king of Comagene, Polemon, and Amintas, all these and a more larger list of scepters. I will be even with thee, doubt it not. But why? 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 Thou hast forespoke my being in these wars and says it is not fit. Well, is it? Is it? If tis denounced against us, why should not we be there in person? Mm, well, I could reply. What is you say? Your presence needs must puzzle Antony. Take from his heart. Take from his brain. From his time, what should not then be spared? He's already traduced for liberty. And he said in Rome, Patinus and Eunuch and your maids manage this war. Sink, Rome. And their tongues rot that speak against us. A charge we bear in the war, and as the president of my kingdom, will appear there for a man. Speak not against it. Nay, I have done. <laughs> 